Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very special video, a very special video. I am reviewing my first ever electric bicycle, the GeForce T31. Okay, let's go over the specs and the features of the GeForce T31. First off, the frame on this bike. It's pretty beefy. This bike, it weighs 50 pounds, guys. This is not a light bike, and it definitely has no flex when you're riding down the road. The whole frame is made out of 6061 aluminum. The fork is made out of 6061 aluminum. The frame is pretty rigid and it's pretty strong, but it's also pretty heavy as well. Much like a lot of side folding electric bikes, it has a latching mechanism that opens up and the bike folds in half. And of course that's where the battery is. But anyway, the uh, steering stem, you have a release lever that allows the latch to open and the handlebars fold down much like any other side folding electric bicycle. You have a second stage adjustment if you need to raise the handlebars up or down, which is really nice. You also can adjust the pitch of the handlebars, which is kind of nice. The seat lever, much like any other folding bike, has a latch mechanism which opens up and then the seat lowers. The bicycle comes with a spring-loaded, really plush, comfortable seat. It also comes with a rear seat too. This electric bicycle has a 350 watt motor on it. 350 watts with about 80 newton meters of torque. When you open up the frame, you have the battery compartment. You pull out the battery with this little latch right here and the battery comes right out. You have a lithium ion battery, 48 volt, 10,400 milliamp at 499 watts. The battery does have a key lock which is at the bottom frame of the bicycle. 
This way you use the key and you can lock the battery to the bicycle, which is a nice feature so that if you lock your bicycle up outside, you don't have to worry about somebody stealing your battery. The range that they say is about maybe 35 to 45 miles which is not bad. I don't really pay attention to range too much because range could be affected by so many different things like wind resistance, whether you're going uphill, the weight you have on your bicycle, all that stuff can play and affect how much range you get out of your bicycle. But I'm gonna tell you just from experience, I've gotten around 35 miles with all the stuff that I carry on this bicycle normally. So I'd say 35 to 45 is pretty accurate. I haven't really timed how long it takes to charge this battery from fully dead to 100%, but I've been close to being fully dead and it seemed like it took a couple hours, maybe two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. This is where you would plug in to charge the bicycle. The battery can be charged inside or outside the bicycle. So if you have a spare, you can charge it while you're using your other battery to run the bicycle. The drivetrain is pretty basic. It does have a 52 tooth chain ring with a 15 to 28 cassette, a basic derailleur. And uh, the pedals are folding. You just push in and the pedals fold. This bike has a rotation sensor, kind of like a Hall Effect sensor, which detects the rotation of the pedals. It is not torque sensing. It's just basic rotation. The wheels are like kind of a uh, cross between maybe a plus size to fat bike maybe, but it, it's probably closer to plus size. It's got 20 by 3.0 Chow Yang, which I've never heard of that brand before. It's knobbies, so it definitely can handle off-road terrain a little bit better than maybe something that's slicker. It does have fenders, full fenders on the front and the back. It has basic brake levers and the brakes are made by a company called Fidel, I guess, Fidel, and uh, they're mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. The bicycle has a 48 volt front adjustable LED headlight. It also has a rear tail light that's LED, all controlled by a little switch on the left handlebar. It also has a horn, which is weird sounding, but it's nice that it actually comes with a horn. It comes with these uh, flat, comfortable grips, which are pretty comfortable. The throttle is right here. So as you can see, the bike wants to go, so I probably better shut it off. So it has a throttle just like a motorcycle, so if you do not want to pedal at all, you just turn that. Depending on how far you turn it is how much power assist you get. The control panel is pretty simplistic. You have a power switch, you have a mode button. Um, for some reason, I am not able to figure out how to heck to adjust this from kilometers to miles per hour. So if anybody out there knows how to adjust that, let me know because I have not been able to figure it out. It might not be able to be adjusted. Um, so you have a speedometer right here which tells you how fast you're going. This right here is your trip counter. It always resets every time you power on and power off the bike. So when you power on the bike and you go for a ride, it'll tell you exactly how far you go and it will reset as soon as you turn off the bicycle. Now, if you wanna see the total mileage of the bicycle, you press and hold the mode switch and I've got 1,024 miles on the odometer and that's how you would tell exactly how much total mileage you have on the bicycle. The mode switch also controls how much power assist. So you got one, two, and three. You push it once, you get two, you push it twice, you get three. The battery indicator has four bars and once one bar goes away, depending on if you're running full throttle, you'll watch it drop down to half or something like that. So it's kind of confusing, but here's a battery chart to tell you exactly what you need to know as far as how much charge you have left on the battery, because it can be confusing. This is the derailleur shifter on the right side. You uh, downshift by pushing the lever and then you upshift by pushing this plus button and that's how you control the derailleur. Last but not least, it does come with a kickstand, which is pretty nice. I like bikes that come with kickstands, especially heavy electric bikes like this one. Right now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to fold this bicycle. It is pretty intuitive, but it's kind of clunky at the same time. First, we're gonna remove the bags. 
Okay, now we'll remove this bag. All right. Now, like any other folding bike, we fold the pedals first. The next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the handlebars all the way up by unlatching the latch and raising that pretty much all the way up. And then we're gonna unlatch this top latch and we're gonna point the uh, brake levers in a downward position or at least close to the downward position. Next, we're gonna lift up on this lever and we're gonna pull the steering stem latch and we're gonna fold the steering stem down to the downward position, somewhat like that. And then we are going to put the seat all the way down, like that. And last but not least, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that uh, key holder right here and we're gonna pull the main frame latch open and we're gonna fold the bike in half. Oh. All right. That's the bike fully folded. As you can see, there is no magnetic locking system. So on a bike like this, it's a BYOB situation, which is bring your own bungees. Without the bungee cords, you're not gonna be able to hold this bike together. It's just not gonna happen. It's gonna fall all apart when you try to carry it. Carrying this bike is doable if you have to, you know, put it on a train or a bus or something. But without the bungees, you're gonna have a flopping mess. You're gonna have things flopping out all over the place. But it is doable and you can carry it on a train if you want to or on a bus if you want to. It's just not the easiest thing in the world. Mainly this folding feature is mainly for storage. If the bike is folded up, you don't really have to worry about space with this bike. So if you have limited space in your garage or your apartment, you'll be able to keep this bike fold it up and it'll stay out of the way. There are three different modes you can ride this bike in. You could just pedal it normally, manually, which I don't recommend to do because this bike weighs a ton. Then there is pedal assist, and then there's just strictly throttle the bike. I tried to find a dark enough space so I could show you this because this uh, display is really not that great in the, in the daytime. Um, as you can see, there's a zero between the brackets. That zero means there's absolutely no assist. And if you try to pedal the bike, it can be done, but you can feel some massive, massive resistance. This thing is heavy. My legs hurt already. So obviously riding without assist is not ideal on this bike because of how heavy it is. So let's try assistance number one. So we push the mode switch one time and it turns to one. And this is power assistance level one. Now we're not gonna be using the throttle at all. We're just gonna be using the pedal assist. We'll see how it works. Okay, as far as all the other modes go, um, when you get into one, two, and three, this thing has a rotation sensor on it, okay? And a rotation sensor means that the computer detects the rotation of the cranks with some sort of Hall effect sensor. And that sensor is not torque sensing. The problem with rotation sensors are is they don't have as precise of control over the motor power output. So I guess on this bike, much like a lot of these cheaper bikes, they have kind of like a predetermined power map. So once it detects rotation, it'll ramp up the power to it gets to its full, you know, full power output. I don't notice that much difference in the power maps on one, two, and three. They both seem to ramp up pretty strong, pretty quickly, but they do top out at different speeds. But as far as the torque, the power output, how fast it gets up to speed, you know, they seem all the same to me on one, two, and three. Three will top out at 20 miles an hour. I'm guessing two will top out at 15 and one will top out at 10. That's what I'm guessing. So unlike other electric bikes, one thing you gotta be aware of on this particular bike is that it definitely wants to kick in the power pretty quickly. So once it detects rotation, uh, you'll start pedaling and it'll feel real hard and then all of a sudden you'll feel that power kick in and that power might kick in faster than you're intending it to. So you gotta kinda be aware of that. 
a lot of your city bikes and a lot of your bikes that have actual torque sensors in the cranks they ramp the power up according to how much pressure you're putting on the pedals so it's a lot more precise control the final mode is obviously the throttle mode and throttling is pretty self-explanatory i mean all you do is pull back on the throttle depending on how far you pull back on the throttle is how fast the bicycle can go and to be honest, this is a pretty fun mode because you don't have to do any work. All in all guys, that's the first look at the GeForce T31 electric folding bicycle. In the next video, which I didn't have time to put in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, my experience with this bike. In the next video, I'm gonna tell you about my likes, my dislikes, and whether I recommend this bicycle or not. So if you guys have any comments or questions, leave it down in the comment and question section and slap a like on the video if you like it. And I will talk with you on the next one. Bye-bye.